watch a drama. You say you wanna watch a comedy. Well, you can watch it with your mama, or you can watch it with your daddy. You'll even sit and watch it with your middle schooler, so you can come and talk around our water cooler. We'll watch it all day and all night. Couch potatoes unite. Whoa, whoa. Couch potatoes unite. Whoa. Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point, which is based on a blog of the same name because the podcast is clearly our reboot. I'm sure I've made that joke before in the last five years, but what the heck? If you haven't heard it, it's new to you, right? My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening and we're checking out our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long-form storytelling of the small screen. CPU, exclamation point, hopes you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays, as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays. And as always, we have several more new episodes on the way. Because the panelists and I live lives behind our podcast, the episodes are published once per week. Subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, via Google Play, and now on Spotify to stay on top of brand new episodes. Episodes already published discuss a variety of shows around the water cooler, including, but not limited to, Fuller House, Jane the Virgin, Supernatural, Orange is the New Black, Riverdale, Gotham, the Marvel shows on Netflix, Stranger Things, and the Arrowverse on the CW. Plus, new episodes are in the works, including revisits for for 13 Reasons Why, Altered Carbon, Doctor Who, Schitt's Creek, Westworld. We'll be launching new panels covering Outlander, The Breaking Bad Universe, This Is Us, and The Orville. And because we look back at shows now past, we'll revisit one of the all-time and most-watched classic sitcoms, MASH. We'll consider the moral implications and quick cancellation of Dollhouse, and we'll travel through time and experience all sorts of identities with Quantum Leap. By the way, did you know that CPU also from time to time goes live? We've been live from bunkers, comedy shows, comic cons, and game stores, and from various locations in the multiverse. Plus, we're planning more live appearances and other cool stuff. It's true, even in these quarantine times. So make sure you like or follow us on our Facebook page, our Twitter at CPU Podcast, our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, or subscribe to the website, our YouTube channel, our Apple iTunes channel, our Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Play and now on Spotify. In the meantime, if you don't hear a show in this podcast format, fellow panelists and I still write reviews and we always seek new panelists. So if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello by finding us at any of those outlets I've mentioned. At the very least, stop by and leave us a thumbs up, comment, or review. We like feedback as long as you check those personal demons at the door because demons are demonic. I don't know. Today's panel returns to the water cooler to continue looking back to look forward while taking a first look at an American fantasy drama series, well, two of them, actually, that have the same name. Today, our magical panel returns to part two of our series, discussing all shows named Charmed. In fact, in this episode, we begin a water cooler series covering the 2018 reboot of Charmed, which airs on The CW. And we're starting with season one, which broadcast from October 14, 2018 to May 19, 2019 on The CW, with a total of 22 episodes. By way of plot summary, Charmed, This Charmed, is an American fantasy drama television series developed by Jenny Snyder Ehrman, Jessica O'Toole, and Amy Rardin, and a reboot of the WB series of the same name created by Constance Berg, which originally aired from 1998 to 2006. Charmed follows the lives of three sisters, Macy, played by Madeline Mantock, Mel, played by Melanie Diaz, and Maggie, played by Sarah Jeffrey, who after the death of their mother discover they are the Charmed Ones, the most powerful trio of good witches who are destined to protect the innocent lives from demons and other dark forces. Each sister has an individual magical power which is noticeably stronger when all three sisters work together as the power of three to defeat their enemies. Originally set in the fictional college town of Hilltown, Michigan, the series begins with sisters Mel and Maggie Vera living with their mother Marisol, who shortly afterward is attacked and killed by an unknown dark force. 
Three months later, Mel and Maggie discover that they have an older half-sister, Macy Vaughn, who was kept a secret by their mother for years but recently moved to Hilltown to accept a new job at the local university. After the first time the sisters are under the same roof, they unexpectedly start exhibiting new magical abilities. The eldest, Macy, receives the power of telekinesis, middle sister Mel can freeze time, and the youngest, Maggie, can hear people's thoughts. Soon afterward, their white lighter, an advisor who protects and guides witches, Harry Greenwood, played by Rupert Evans, gathers all three sisters together and reveals to them that they are witches, as was their mother. Marisol had bound her daughter's powers when they were each born to protect them and let them live normal lives, but was in the process of unbinding their powers on the night she was murdered. The sisters ultimately accept their new destiny as the Charmed Ones. The reboot changes several elements from the original Charm series, including moving the fictional setting from San Francisco to Hilltown, making the middle sister a lesbian, giving the youngest sister the power of telepathy instead of premonition, changing the family name from Hallowell to Vera, and having all three of the sisters' alliterative names begin with M instead of P. Additionally, the reboot has a more ethnically diverse cast. Today, our magical charmed panel, namely Sarah, Jeremy, Jessica, and Michael, have returned to the water cooler ready to look forward at new seasons and take a first look at this rebooted drama with our respective books of shadows in tow. As always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have viewed season one, at least, of the charmed reboot to date and may discuss sensitive plot points. So for those of you who have not watched the new charmed and plan to do so, listen at your own risk as there may be major spoilers. Welcome back, panel. How are you? You. Good. Hello, good. Okay, good. <laughs> Are you ready to talk about new charmed in heavy air quotes? I will try yes. my best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <laughs> well, I have a feeling this panel may get this part of the panel may get a little spicy, but of course, what we have to do is take a moment because you're now going to identify yourselves again. So if somebody's joining us for the first time on this episode of this series, we're going to be nice to you and give you all of the panelists' names again. Identify yourself by your first name. Tell us how you came to watch this rebooted Charmed. What made you start watching? How did you find out about it? What kept you watching? And then you get to rate your interest in watching Charmed Season 1, at least following Season 1, or how you feel about Season 1 having started watching the reboot along the standard CPU character question, which changes with each show we do. Are you ready, panel? Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Primitive. Okay. (laughs) So how would you rate your interest in the, quote, new Charmed? Do you love this show? Whether you watch the original or not, and you might be too young to have done so in time with its airing anyway, you think the show is a fresh new start for a story concept that has a lot of life in it. Haters gonna hate anyway, like Maggie Vera. Though you were initially suspicious of the reboot, given the soapy tone of the original show, you find the reboot to be a positive affirmation of feminism and inclusive casting and a strong statement about how reboots can find new audiences, even if the journey to finding that new audience can be a rocky adjustment at first, like Mel Vera. Do you watch the show more for the main characters than anything? In fact, your affinity for the characters has led you to become prepared to protect and defend them and the show at all costs costs, especially because you enjoy the new trio of sisters, they're like family to you. Though the show can be uneven and willfully illogical at times, you also find that you enjoy the modern and somewhat snarky new take on the original premise, like Harry Greenwood. Do you remain cautious about your feelings concerning this reboot? You love that, like the original, family, love, and sisterly bonding form the heart of the show, but you also see a lot of dark spots or darkness and unevenness in the new story format, and you're not sure that you can completely endorse this series, whether the original could be considered better or not, like Macy Vaughn. On. Do you watch and even enjoy the show at times? Though doing so goes against every evil impulse you have, still you find the Maggie character charming and are intrigued by some of the villains and the new show's way of depicting demons. Though you might need a short break from the show to ponder that opinion further, like Parker Kane, or you watched one season or less and decided that the show really wasn't for you, either because you decided to give it the benefit of the doubt only to be disappointed, even burned in the end by not seeing the show for what it really was, like Gavin Burdett, or because you felt everything was too different from what you knew before for it to be enjoyable, and so you decided to just let it go, like Nico Hamada, who would like to start? I will. Okay. 
So hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, Jessica. I came to watch the show because I loved the original, and I was like, it's a remake. Sometimes remakes shouldn't happen, but let's give it a shot. And for this season, I am very strong, and I'm a Macy. Like, that's where I'm sitting at with this. I am Macy Vaughn. I'm very cautious about it. I do like that it is still very sisterly bonded. There are some just some unevenness, but I'm going to keep giving it a shot. So I'm going to hold in there, but I'm very much Macy right now. Welcome back, Jessica. Thank you. I'm Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Hey. I, like Jessica, watched the show because I was a really big fan of the original. I would have to rate my interest in this one as a Mel. I was originally very cautious and I, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. Even after the first couple episodes, I, I had really strong negative feelings about it. But after finishing the first season, it's really grown on me a lot, actually. Welcome back, Jeremy. I am Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. I would have to say I am more of a Macy because I am still very, this, although Charmed, the original OG Charmed is in my heart, this one is still, it, it's, it, I am accepting it for what it is. Sorry, I missaid it. I am more of a Harry. I think, okay, I might be a Macy mixed with a Harry. I might be a little bit of that. Because I'm very cautious because I'm accepting it as it is, but I'm also judging it for what they're doing. Because they're, like, some of the stuff that they do can, like, kind of alludes to the original Charmed without alluding to, without, like, if you don't really notice it. But I can, like, see what they're trying to do and how it's not being as successful. Like, the first season, I I love the fact that they were being more op- more open about feminism and making it spoken but at the same time, it was extremely, it was to the point of excessiveness, which I personally, I'm a feminist, but there's a point where you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like in your face all the time. I enjoy it. For, I'm like, so I'm watching it for what it is and not for what they're trying to make it out of. <laughs> so I personally, we're talking about this later, I personally didn't like the first season. I'm actually enjoying the second season. How'd you come to watch the new Charmed? I actually, I was one of the first people I would say in the world. No, (laughs) I was one of the, uh, when I saw the advertisement, I was like, hmm, this might be interesting. And so, of course, I was looking at the, like, what the older Charmed people said about it. And since they weren't really, it seemed like they weren't really approached about it more so. I'm like, maybe they should have, like, had them be, like, the OG. But you have to watch the second season because second season it kind of makes you think, ooh, really? So you, it's, it, the first season was kind of all over the place for me, but then it got put into perspective when I saw the second season. So I'm still watching it as is, so concerned, so keeping my heart shielded from any heartbreaks that I might feel from disappointment, but I still, I am enjoying it for what it is and not saying, oh, this thing I'll be better than a charm. It's just not going to be better. Charm, but it's in the old charm. It's just something different to be more modern to what this day and age is used to because everything else is more up to date in technology. Back then, it wasn't as up to date. They were trying to like move it there, and you saw that. But this one is more what we're dealing with here and now, pretty much. And that's what I like about it mainly. Welcome back, Michael. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I don't know what to say for the reason why I'm watching this show. Should I just, can I, should I just be honest? Yeah. Kylie made me. Yeah. <laughs> because I was. 75%. <laughs> it's real. Okay. Here's why listeners stay with me. I'm a good person, but <laughs> I'm on the list for the old charm. And that was even before this show came on. Right. And then when this show came about and we had people requesting it, Kylie was like, Hey, Sarah. <laughs> In a nice, kindly way, but she kind of said I had to watch it, so I did. Ugh. I am a Nico. I don't care for it, and that's me. <laughs> oh, but boy. I'm here with everybody tonight, <laughs> and that's me. All right. Welcome back, Sarah. That, 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 I think. <laughs> and, of course... <laughs> My name is Kylie. I both moderate and participate on this panel, as is often the case. I came to watch the rebooted Charmed because if you know me or you follow the blog or you follow the podcast or you just talk to me about TV, you know that I'm very keyed in to what's coming up 
in the future seasons and I actually keep track of that for our website but also just because I'm personally interested and I knew they were making a charmed reboot it started actually with some scuttle that was happening because I do follow Holly Marie Combs and Alyssa Milano on Twitter and they started to go back and forth them particularly less less Rose McGowan and less Shannon Doherty she's completely checked out but the, the other two were not very happy about the fact that they were making a new Charmed and then I found out through various entertainment rags that they had piloted a new Charmed and that they were going to make this new Charmed and so when I did the annual progress report about potential shows that I thought that the podcast would pick up I did think Charmed would be one of them mainly because people would have morbid curiosity in checking it out because I knew there was a lot of people that love Old Charmed and there's a lot of question and controversy. This is where the controversy comes in that I alluded to in our last episode. There's a lot of nostalgia wrapped around the old show. How could the new show even begin to, first of all, why make it? It kind of treads on that nostalgia. And second of all, are they even going to be able to do it justice? So we picked it up and made it part of a series, which is why Sarah had to watch it. <laughs> but I watched Charmed the first season. We've not, the second season just ended the Friday before we started recording this. So aside from Michael, I don't know that many of us have watched season two. Based on season one, I agree with Jeremy's sentiments quite a bit. The first few episodes are a mess. You really don't know what's happening. And I would actually argue that at least one of those three girls does not do a very good job on the acting front. But Ooh, which one? We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But as the as the season progresses and it finds its footing and it starts to twist the fairy tale a little bit so yes there are nods to old charmed but it's definitely started to mangle that kind of original concept into something that becomes its very own whether that's successful or not it actually also grew on me i don't know that it grew on me to a mel level i think that i would be a mix between harry and macy I kind of left the Harry one close to Leo because actually Harry is my favorite character on this show. I enjoy that snarky, I'm sorry, I enjoy that snarky addition. I enjoy how his relationship to the girls differs from Leo's relationship to the Hallowells. But I also think that there's a lot of unevenness and a lot of weird logic and they just throw supporting characters at the wall like spaghetti and it's really just to, to see what sticks and some of them are very charming and some of them are very bad and so in the end I just kind of feel meh about it I don't love it but I don't hate it either I do think there are some good storylines and we'll talk about that so that's the initial temperature check we're all over the board so that's very interesting but now because we're taking a first look I have to ask you to rate it along the star rating scale this does not change with each show we do it's the same star rating scale we always use if you're familiar with panelist Hillary she calls it the star business what I'd like you to do is to go around the water cooler of course we are virtual right now because we're quarantined our virtual water cooler and tell me how you would rate charmed as of this first watch and you can justify it however that first watch is defined for you. Would you rate it five stars? Holy smokes, this is the greatest charmed show ever. Or this is the greatest TV fantasy you've ever seen. You have to watch every episode. You just can't live without charm. Five stars. Is it four stars? It certainly seems intriguing. And you're going to keep watching. But you see pitfalls in the premise. Is it three stars? You've maybe made it through this first season. You're going to give it one more try. There are things you like, things you don't. You're going to see which things are allowed to flourish. Is it two stars? Maybe you only watched part of the first season or you're only agreeing to watch this season. Chances are you're mainly bored, but there's some intrigue or fascination that holds it together, no matter how unlikely, even though you haven't convinced yourself yet to keep watching. Or is it one star? Pass on this one, guys. It's a snoozer. It's not funny. It's not good. It's not your cup of tea. Why did they even blaspheme the world with a reboot of Charmed? Pass on it. One star. 
Who would like to start this? I'm sitting solid at a three. I'll give season two a try because season one definitely did rap, kind of bringing me in a little more than season one, than the beginning of the season did. There's things I like, and by things I mean person, and I love Harry. He's my favorite. I just adore him and his whole story. We can get into it later. I love him. And that's what I'm watching to see how he flourishes. I could live without the sisters, to be completely honest. Thanks, but I'll Jess. give it another shot. All right. Thanks, Jess. I give it one star. <laughs> Euro stars wasn't a choice. Never is. To be here here to be completely fair though, and, and to be honest to the listener, I did not I don't like reboots as a general rule. I can't think of one that I've ever really liked. So that's part of it. It's just Star not- Trek. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Those aren't re- but those aren't reboots. They're like completely different. There are sequels and prequels and spinoffs. Yeah, they're not. I don't consider those reboots, I guess. But that's just not my cup of tea. That's the best line in this to me. It's not my cup of tea. And I just wasn't interested in it at all. And it didn't ever interest me from day one. But I wasn't that interested in watching it in the first place. So I'm probably not the best person to ask. There are certain things that I like. And as we get through it. I will tell you what those things are. And I think that everybody on the show is very talented. And I love the diversity and showing all the different aspects of like what the world actually is today. Like I, I really appreciate them trying to do all of that. But no, one step. So I will give it. Mm, I'm trying to think because I don't want to give it a two star. I give it three stars because I am watching season two. I just think season one was just very messy. It was very messy in the sense of. I did not like the. I did not like how their powers. I like how they try to make the powers go with the OGs, but at the same time, some of it was a little extreme for me. I did not like. I, I mean, I like how they did Macy being half demon, but at the same time, I wasn't too keen on it either because it's like there's already a dark piece now. You know, something else is going to happen, and then when they introduced the source, she figured out, oh, this is going to happen. So for me, I just personally feel that. I'm giving season two a try, and I actually like season two for what it's for what for what's going on in it. But I'm just gonna keep it at three because I don't know if they go past season two. I don't know if they should <laughs> right now because season one I was like they gonna give make it past season one <laughs> because of how it ended and everything. So so P.S. Yeah. As we're sitting here, they have renewed the show for season three. Oh no! <laughs> God, <that's very> <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Not. No problem. <laughs> I think that makes it up to me now. So I would give it a solid three, maybe a little over a three. The first couple episodes, though, were so messy that I actually had to go back and rewatch them because I was like, whoa, whoa, I, I wasn't paying attention and the writing's not concise enough for me to do that at this point. I think they did get a lot better after the third episode where it was easier to keep track of everything than they kind of had established their identities. But it is still... I can see what they were trying to do, and I agree with some of it, but there's some things that I completely don't agree with. It it takes, it's like wine. It it takes a little time to get used to it. And yeah. <laughs> okay. But I like it. I'm enjoying it so far. Somewhat. All right. I would also give this show, I'm at a three, three and a half. So I guess maybe three and a quarter. It's definitely not a four. There, it's... It's not intriguing in a way. There are things that I like and things that I don't. I think it's pretty evenly split. The only reason I'm giving it a fraction of a star more than a three is because the first season did get better by the end. And it did have an end point that potentially had a nice launching had for what happens in season two again haven't watched any of it I don't know if that's true but at least when I ended watching the season I felt like okay I could probably keep watching this show and not be hate watching it while I am producing a podcast so but there there are a lot of things I like and and don't like either and it, it is it's not it's not like a lukewarm feeling it's either I like it or I do not like it. It's not like, meh, this is meh. I don't feel that way. It's the average of strong feelings, which for me is very unusual when it comes to a show. But we'll talk about what that means in a second. So we've kind of all hinted at the fact that we, especially in Sarah's case, but even for those of us who were less on a one, that we didn't necessarily like the show right away, that it had to kind of get there for us. 
So I guess what we need to do is really talk about, I kind of want to start with, we can start one of two ways. We can either start with talking about the plot itself and what you liked or what you didn't like, or we can start with the original versus new and which ones, we, which aspects we liked, didn't like, or liked better or liked worse. Which, which would you like to do first? I think we should talk about the plot. Okay. And get maybe get some clarity there. Maybe some of us are just confused and bored, or I don't know. So maybe you guys will turn me around. And like, take notes again. <laughs> He brought his journal. He sometimes does that. Okay, so when we're thinking about plot of season one specifically, so no spoilers to season two, Michael, just season one, what did you like or what didn't you like? You can start on either side of the coin. Uh I liked the diversity of the characters. Like, we've brought this up before when on the Riverdale panel, but I really do like that shows now kind of straying away from the super whitewashed cast. I do love that the girls are proud of their ethnicities. I believe they're Puerto Rican. Well, I they're, believe they're Latinx oh, at least. I don't know if they're Puerto Rican. I know they talked about it, and Mel's got a flag in her bedroom, but I can't remember exactly, so I don't want to say yeah, for Mel sure. Mel and Maggie, I think, are are Hispanic, and then Macy is just African American, Hispanic and African American. Yeah. 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 So Spoiler: Maggie is also African. Oh my bad. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Spoiler: <laughs> Maggie is not the half. Mel's no. a half sister, not Macy. Well, it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. We'll get to it. We, is that one of the clarifying <laughs> but, questions? <laughs> I mean, I don't deeply care. That's the thing is, it didn't. Anyway, but yeah, I will just tell you, I really like Macy because, like, she's all into science and she's like a logical one. That's what I like. Mm-hmm. Macy's oh, my favorite sister. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I will concur um, with that. Mike has I a like cr- Maggie. <laughs> Maggie is my second favorite. I like, I say, I like Macy and Maggie. I can't is my stand Maggie because well. Maggie is my Phoebe. <laughs> Maggie yeah. is a hot mess. <laughs> wants to pledge a sorority, an antiquity institution that pissed me off bad in the first season. So we're just gonna stop there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So one of the problems with this, and I think we a couple people have alluded to it because you said the first couple episodes. For me, the pilot is really hard to watch. It took forever to get to the place. Like Act one was this horror movie where the moms died and murder. And then act two moves really slowly. We're grieving, we're upset, we're sad, we're blah, blah, blah. And then finally, act three, they crammed in all the action and exposition. And so it was really hard to like it for me. I do think a lot happened in the pilot episode. I feel like the pilot could have been more than one episode. Or things could have been taken out of the pilot to take away and make room for everything else. They needed to balance Um, the pilot better. I will say the pilot is what initially made me not want to give it a try. (laughs) I watched the pilot and I was like, this is a hot mess express. (laughs) But I'll give it a shot. But the, it, it did. It, it was just too much in the pilot. But it grew on me. It took a while. Honestly, it took until the last maybe 10 episodes for me to really be like, okay, I like this. And that's saying a lot when there's 22 episodes in a season. So long. Yeah, it is so long. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. There were parts of it that I loved. I do love Macy. Maggie is a close second. I don't like Mel. I don't like Mel. I do it. not I like Mel. I don't like her. She's I just not. Can't. <laughs> I well, like she's a naked I, I, sister. So here's really, my launch. Ready? It's her acting. It's her acting. <laughs> it's awful. It's not good. And she's the one that has, in some she's ways... She's got the most storylines that can build upon. The most storylines. Mm-hmm. She's got the most emotional reactions to all of the things. And to me, no, I mean, no disrespect. I'm sure she's a very nice lady in real life. But this is high school drama playing out in front of us in ways that the old g was not doing. Okay. Is it just me or does her even character presence change? The other girls, Macy and Maggie, I feel like they stay the same except for the episode where Maggie and Mel switch. But I feel like Mel, there'll be like a handful of episodes where she's this, you know, tough as nails. I'm going to do this and I'm so strong. And then all of a sudden her acting just changes. And she's not that same character anymore. I don't know if that's all her, though, because going back to the pilot and how jam-packed it was, 
What I was going to say is the writers of the pilot are the three creators. Jenny Snyder Ehrman made Jane the Virgin, which is a fabulous show. If you haven't mm -hmm. watched it, highly recommend Jane the Virgin. That is a very quick-paced, quick-witted satire, romantic satire. I feel like the transition into supernatural fantasy fiction was one that was very awkward for this set because the other two women that are creating this with her wrote on Jane the Virgin with her. So this is a team that came from that show. This is a whole different genre, and I feel like they were trying to do what they did on Jane the Virgin with the initial set of episodes of this show, and it didn't work because this isn't the genre that is suited for that. So you had a whole bunch of stuff that was just thrown into that pilot, and then they kind of had to build off from that. And the writing for Mel particularly is very inconsistent. I think whatever that actress touches, what is her name again? I just read it for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. Melanie Diaz. Whatever, whatever the mood or tone of it is, whether she's tough as nails or softer like you were talking about, to me she plays all of that over the top to the point that I'm turned off by her story. I just don't care. I think I don't care about the romances. I don't care. Yeah, or the it took feminism. a good eight or nine episodes into the series until I even cared about her at all. I do like I Macy. You still don't care for Mel? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I just can't. It's it's the dynamic for me. Because, I, I mean, even, it didn't feel like, it still feels like she's, now it feels like she's the outcast. I mean, it feels like she's the outcast. Like, it feels like they're all still individuals and they're not actually being sisters. Like, it's just very odd to me because I feel like they're not embracing one another like they should be. They're just like, oh, we have to do this. It's something we have to do. Not like, I want to do this. I want to get to know you a little bit more. Like, it just felt, it just feels really weird. This season, first season just feels really weird. It felt like they were starting out on season four of the original show. Yeah! Or they're uh, trying to bring in another sister. It almost like it almost feels like you're missing some of that backstory yeah. and that character development between the other sisters. But before they introduce a new one, it's it's very yeah. it was very strange, a disjointed beginning. Well, the one thing that I will say that I I like that they did that they did in the original was to create discord between the sisters, because I mean, again, as a person with several sisters, we don't always get along, and we're all very different. I like that kind of friction that they went they went right to it. I mean, there was already friction between Mel and Maggie coming in to the mm -hmm. pilot. Mel is this like militant feminist, you know, women's supporter. And Maggie's like, oh, I want to wear a crop top and go to a sorority, which there's nothing wrong with either of those things, but they're very different. And that was one of the things that I... I was like, oh, it's realistic at least, you know, whatever. I do think you're right. They tried to make a page dynamic by having the other sister be not raised with them. There is a level of realism to this season sometimes. I do like the fact that one of the things I like about the show is that there is a modern context that fits with what they're trying to do with this show. And it works. And there is a sense of... It's very much set in the now, but that's only sometimes because then other times, another character that I hate so much, and maybe you're supposed to hate her, but like I just don't even want her to be on the screen is Lucy, the president of the sorority chapter. I'm sure there are Thank girls. I, have notes about her. <laughs> I know. I'm sure there are girls like that, and that's fine. I mean, it feels very, you know, I guess. I like when she reads her thoughts, though. That <laughs> So, uh, so I wrote down one thing she said at one point because it made me so mad at the time. Lucy said, if a guy cheats on you and gets a, and you can't figure out who did it, did it even really happen? I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? She's definitely, they're definitely going for an archetype of something that they think is common in a college. Whether or not it is, I mean, I don't know. One thing I can say I do really like about this show is it, I, I don't think it'll ever have that timeless quality in it because there are a lot of modern cultural references in it. They do take a few jabs at Trump throughout the whole first season, which I thought was hilarious. They talk about slut shaming. They talk about, you know, this, the things that are going on in society right now. So in 10, 15 years, you can't go back and watch it and suspend your disbelief that it's not happening right now, which is kind of enjoyable because not a lot of TV does that actually. Yeah, that's true. 
Can we talk about Harry? Because you all seem to really enjoy him. Is cooking. I love, I love Harry. I want him to make me an English breakfast. <laughs> A traditional English breakfast. I just enjoy the fact that, especially with Mel and the family, he takes on this very assertive, snarky, but loving relationship with these three women. I think that that's an energy that makes this Charmed different from the other Charmed. There was some snarkiness in that other Charmed, but it was fluffier and more, you know, sort of bantery between the sisters, not so much Leo. I like the fact that he's kind of included in the club. I don't know about Jessica has, I guess, feelings about his storyline separately with his possible <laughs> illicit romance with Charity, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, I can't stand <laughs> Okay, yeah, I do not like Charity. <laughs> so all of that I stuff. I just not, I, I, Charity just got on my nerves, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, Harry oh. was supposed to be the Watchers from Buffy. Like, oh, get a British guy and have him boss around the girls. I don't know. Who that didn't take- bother me, though. I mean, British guys bossing Scoobies around doesn't bother me. But I didn't. I did think that, but it didn't offend me that they were doing it that. Been more creative, I guess. Like, okay. I don't know. I didn't hate it, but you guys all seemed to really, really like him, and I was like, oh, he's. There. I just think I didn't he fits like him in at really first well. because at first I was still like Leo. Like my brain was uh, like, this isn't Leo. Yeah. So yeah. it did take me a minute to really love him, but I think the more that I saw his storyline develop, and really what I'm touching on is after he got out of Tartarus and was literally still destroying himself trying to find his son like that whole like arc right there is what really made me love him the most and to see that vulnerability was why i loved harry i just think he's cute and i want a british man to make me a traditional english breakfast yeah he had that lost puppy <laughs> meant like aspect yeah. to him at one point especially when he's, when he's living in the house and mm-hmm. doing laundry and just i don't know those weird little little things you see well and i know this i know spoiler that this changes in the future but I like in the first season that it is very much he's an extension of the family without it being romantic. It's wholly mm-hmm. platonic. And he has kind of an older brother vibe with the sisters. And it doesn't feel, I don't know, it, he also runs the go-between between the Elders Council, which, I mean, you made a fascist comparison in the first episode, Jeremy, about the... Oh, I know. I, it's, it's way worse in this. Way worse in this series. And so I like the fact that Harry acts as that go-between and is actually kind of forceful with them. It's not something we always saw when Leo went off to go talk to the Elders in the original. So I like... I like those little touches, and that's kind of why I like him. He's my—he's the bright spot on the on the show for me, but that's because he's funny. He's the comic relief. I also love how, like, when he was gone, the girls clearly cared about him as a person because mm-hmm. they were like, "It's not the same without him here." Mm-hmm. So let's see, Kylie, did you notice that they did a lot of like supernatural s things in this show, like the black smoke demon stuff going on? I mean, I don't think I associated it to Supernatural. Let's just be honest. It's on the CW. And all those (laughs) shows copy each other. Okay? So it's like I can't... And I've been watching this network for 20 years, 25 years. So I don't know that I can pull apart and say, yes, that was a Supernatural homage. To me, I'm still too busy comparing it to the original Charmed, which was also on this network, than to be able to pick out things like that. So, what else did you like or not like? I hated the terrible green screen effects. There were some really bad and special effects. When they fought the dead one demon, was he was he freezing people? I don't remember what it was. But yeah, it was yeah, the yeah. professors. Yeah, I was like, that's a bad demon. They could have done better <laughs> with that demon. It's like, is that a paper mache icicle going on over there? <laughs> that was hilarious. I was like, no. And then... Was the Sarkana in this? In this yes. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Arcana I did not like the Sarkana. I was like, what is the point of having half witches, half whatever Harry is? Supernatural freedom fighters. It makes no sense. They're, like, it made no sense to me. I'm just like, y'all couldn't make Macy half that either. It made no sense. You're going to have Mel be a part of the group? Come on now. <laughs> See, I like the Sarkana. I, I thought it was more realistic than 
it, it was everything you wanted to happen with the original elders council and the the original charm. You wanted yeah. somebody stand up to him, and no one ever did. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in between the two of you. I liked them, but I also agree with Michael in the sense that it never really paid off in a satisfying way because mm-hmm. really all you were trying to get to was Fiona, Charity's sister, and we didn't need the Sarkana to get there. By the way, Fiona is played by the person who played Cammy on the originals. Yes, Leah Pipes. yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I was like, she became a witch. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> No longer one singing. Thing, one thing I have to say about this whole first season is even though it's 22, 23 episodes long, it felt like they rushed a lot of things towards yeah. the end of it. Like, even the body count at the end, I'm like... like That's because they, they, wait, they waited to launch. So I don't know if you noticed this, and as if you listen to the podcast, you know I send out preparatory points to the panelists. And my plot summary, the first half of it was, here are the major bullets. And then when I got to, like, the last seven or eight episodes I put in whole bits of the summary because that is really when the story kicked in everything up to that was sort of the minutia day-to-day stuff and monsters of the week and it never really came together until the last third of the season it was poor pacing very poor pacing indeed and I will agree that it happened really fast because the whole time I'm like this is just kind of going and then it all kicked in like you said and I was like there's no way that they're gonna fit everything they need to fit in for the season finale and then all of a sudden it was there and I was like wait like it's you blinked and it was done Mm -hmm. but from that I will say I loved Galvin and Mama is it Mama Roz and Mama Ross yeah Mm -hmm. I really liked them I thought they were wonderful additions I so I don't know if you mentioned it in our questions I but Galvin was in Jumanji mm-hmm. as Tank, and I loved him in that. And Maggie was in Disney's Descendants as Audrey. Mm. So it was neat to see, like, young people. They're the only two people I recognized, though, were those two. But I really did like Galvin and bringing in another aspect of different types of witchcraft. Like, instead of it being just what we're mm. used to from Charmed, which is the book of spells and incantations and things like that. Like they brought in, I don't want to say voodoo because it's not that, but like another branch of like the Wiccan religion. Oh. So I thought that was pretty neat. I, I liked it. I like the 80s episode. Oh, oh I like yeah. It. <laughs> that was pretty good. The 80s episode when they were at the party? The sorority part? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I could have taken taken or left that one actually because I kept thinking, man, their outfits are not accurate. I don't care. That was not good costuming. Their costumer is obviously too young. So <laughs> the one one-off episode that I enjoyed was actually the one where they end up in Macy's '90s guilty pleasure TV show. Oh no, that's what I was thinking about. Oh okay. So- yeah, that, that's what... Because it, it reminded me of Supernatural, actually. Yeah, well, that one was clearly an homage to several different <laughs> WB <laughs> All mishmashed together. All mishmashed together, but Supernatural was a big one because they were angels. and. I feel like they made a reference to pie at one point, too. Like Dean's love of pie. I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. No. I have to say, this show... Up until the last third, I was definitely having what panelist Nick likes to call the second screen experience. Like, I wasn't really paying a ton of attention. Mm-hmm. I could eat while I was watching this show. I could clean while I was watching this show. But then there came a point where I finally said, you know what, I'm going to sit down and pay attention because I feel like I have to at this point. That mm-hmm. was maybe episode 15 or 16. Yeah, I, I watched two episodes of this. And then was like, well, I have to keep watching it. So it shall now be known as Background Noise. <laughs> they did have some super cute outfits in it, though. I didn't, I couldn't even, I don't even know what they were wearing. I wrote them in my notes, so I, I, re- I remember super cute outfits. Mm-hmm. I didn't even really like the episode where she auditions for an acapella group. And I was, guys. I was not okay with that one. I was in an acapella group in my college in Michigan. So, like, I should have really locked into this one, but I I was like, no. Right. I also didn't know they were in Michigan until we started recording this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. When did they say that? It was, like, once. Oh, okay. It was literally once. 
So what college is this supposed to be then? I'm not sure if I'm it's called. U of M because it's big and has fancy research labs and stuff? Maybe. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. I don't know that we're supposed to think of an analog there because I look at it and I think they're in Vancouver probably. <laughs> Yeah, I assumed they were, like, in Boston or something, but... Yeah. Did anybody else hate the actor who played Parker? Yeah. Every time he was Sorry. on screen or even opened his mouth, I'm just like, oh, my God, I hate this guy. I don't know what it was about him, just something. I don't know that I hated him, but I was lukewarm on the Maggie-Parker relationship. Like, I didn't have... I really didn't have a stake in that horse race, to be honest with you. I, I couldn't have cared if they remained together or not. I like Maggie as a character, and I think she does evolve over season one in an interesting way, but not where Parker is concerned. Parker feels like a throwback to Cole. Cole. Well, and his weird shadow power. What is that? That's his like, whole oh, thing. you can turn into black smoke. whoop de doo Well, he's half demon, half human. <laughs> they think he's going to be the source of all evil. By the way, his father, Alistair, is played by the guy who was on Rain and played the one who kept sleeping with Catherine de' Medici, if you watch that, <laughs> which I did. Highly, did watch that. Gu- highly guilty pleasure historical fiction. I could take or leave a recommendation depending upon the audience. I don't know that you'd like it. It's but called I al- Rain? R-E-I-G-N, Rain. It's oh. about Mary Oh, Mary I thought Scott's. you were talking about that show about the deadly rain. For a second. No. I got you. I know what you're talking about. At yeah. Least. He was the most familiar face to me, was the guy who plays Alistair. And I I just took what they were giving me at that point about that family. I didn't I didn't care one way or another. Which maybe isn't a great review, but everybody's so quiet on this one. This is really hard. It's- well, we were all raised where if you don't have anything nice to say That's never stopped to be you, fair. so stop <laughs> I didn't mind Parker personally. He's not needed. I mean, I didn't care either way, to be honest. Like, when he was gone, I was like, okay, he's gone. Like, I I wasn't sad about it in the slightest. So I'm looking at some of the cast members right now and some of the stuff they've done. The Lucy was on True Blood. Really? I do not remember her. I can't stand her. I know we already talked about her, but I really cannot. She's like a pickle. She leaves that taste in your mouth. (laughs) That means she's a good actress. She did her job well. She did but she literally took the stereotypical sorority girl and just ran. Yeah, the whole time I was watching, I was like, wow, you are really turning the women's lib movement back like 20 years right now, girl. Worst <laughs> character ever. I just did not like her. I did not like her. I, w- I thought she was gone. Like, after the episode where the ghost was trying to get her to jump off the house, I, I thought she was gone, and I was so happy. And then she came back. She was being used as a pawn by Alistair. She was, which, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Well, let's be fair. She was a pawn. Ugh, I do not, I I just can't even. I hope, I really hope that that's not the stereotypical sorority gal. I mean. It made me like sororities even less than I already do. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I have nothing to add because I'm old. So... Let's talk about the end of the season before we get into comparison, because we keep hinting to sort of the overarching things we liked or didn't like. But the whole purpose of, really, the point of the show is that we learn that Macy is actually a whole sister to Maggie, not a half-sister, and that Mel is the half-sister to both of them, and that Macy was resurrected. She died because, I don't even remember why she died, but they... Marisol called in a necromancer who brought her back to life and also that came with a devil's pact where she'd be tied to this necromancer to a demon. She's able to access demonic powers which gives her this special sight. She has to stab herself in the forehead to do it. And really what it all... acupuncture needle. Yeah. And really what it all boils (laughs) down to is that while Alistair is trying to position Parker to be the source... Macy is the one who ends up taking on that power. Also, Fiona is trying to be the source, but she calls it the flame. They end up icing her at one point. So there's mm-hmm. this whole thing about what the source is, and then they end up storing it in a pendant that is Macy's pendant that is a yin-yang. And I think we should talk about the weapons, because that's different for this Charmed. The I kind of like that, weapons. actually. I like power-ups. <laughs> 
I liked them too, but I wish they would have came in sooner. But that kind of comes back to how we were talking about that all of a sudden they picked up and ran. I do like them. I thought it was kind of, I felt bad for Macy that her only gift was her necklace. Like, I understand why she had it. It was to tie her to her sisters so she could come back if anything were to happen. But I was like, man, Mel gets a bracelet and some, like, knife-looking things. Mm -hmm. And Maggie gets a staff that can bend. I don't know. I don't know the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. She can can affect emotion with the staff and also hit people with it. Take them apart. It's like the Mighty Morphin Power Macy's. Why wouldn't you have weapons? That makes sense to me, I guess. Right? I don't know. I, I liked the room that they found him in. I thought mm-hmm. that was real, like, kind of Hogwartsy. <laughs> the Chamber of Secrets. A little bit. It's the room of requirement. It is the room of requirement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gave them what they needed. It did feel very last minute, though. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I'm think if they would have fixed their pacing issues, it would have been a lot better than it was. Yeah. I'm very picky. I'm very, very picky. Like, there were some things in this charm that I'm like, what? Like, there was one part, what was it? When they went to, like, some pr- some prison world to find their mama. Oh, when Macy kept rewriting time. Yeah, that was the season yeah. finale. Yeah, I'm like, stop. Just stop. That should, no, y'all can't do that. And I didn't like how Macy became the source. I just didn't. It just didn't work for me. Like, like a plot line that they maybe would come up with in season six when they're really grasping for something. (laughs) Yeah. It felt like it could have been the end of the whole series if it had to have been. Yeah. yeah, Definitely felt like it could have been the end of the whole series because I'm like, they did Macy wrong. We don't want this for her. (laughs) No. I'd rather have it for Mel, (laughs) maybe. Yeah. Yes. Blah. Yeah. I am interested to see if it comes back, though. Like, if this is one of those things that will come back around or something more to do with Macy's demon power later. I would imagine that it has to. I can't believe that that element of her is so, would be used up and then just forgotten about. Well, that's what I've been saying about Supernatural this whole time, but we haven't seen Sam's demon powers again, have we? Okay, remember, (laughs) we have a Supernatural panel, which you were on. Why do we keep bringing you into charge? Because you're picking and choosing your plot points here, lady. (laughs) You're cherry-picking the fandoms. All I'm saying is, I, I actually believe Sam's powers will come back, but I haven't watched any of the second half, by the way, of this season. But for Charmed, it just, unless they're really bad at what they do, I cannot see that being a forgotten thing. It was such a major part of this season and of Macy's biology. I just don't see that even being a thing where they just forget about that. We did it. It's done. But I could be wrong. I did like all the people just showing up at the house at the end of the season. Yes, they met a lot of mythological creatures like a satyr and they met I live a without pixie Chloe. who was the manic pixie dream girl, but dream an girl. actual pixie. <laughs> I liked yeah. her. I thought her <laughs> was very like, sad, no. actually. I didn't like any of was very this. sad, though. Like, it they was. stole her heart and made her into a slave. I was like, oh, that's terrible. You that was kind real. of a dark episode, actually. I that, think there was a lot of dark moments in this series, though. Like, there was a, some of them, like, oh, this is not the original. Jesus, what's going on? It, I did like how they did tell her, though, like, get the other pixies together and hide your hearts. We did the bathroom like together, girls. I mean, there were some one-offs that I think worked because they actually gave gave it a point. There's some social awareness in this show that there really wasn't in the first show, which also changes the tone a little bit. So the going, Medusa episode, yeah, that too. There, there's just more of a <laughs> seriousness about this Charmed and less of a sense of humor. If that makes sense, I did have a lot of feelings about the Medusa episode, like not bad ones, but like. I will say that one should have maybe came with a small trigger warning for people who are survivors, but that episode was one of the ones that stuck with me for sure. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one myself. So did anybody else think when Nico and not, we all know we, nobody cares about Mel, but like when Nico <laughs> and Mel are talking and you find out that they cheated on each other and they're both still together, there was no discussion about it. It was just like, oh, that happened. Yeah, that's weird. Well, I, was, I, I was very disappointed. 
I was like, yeah, I could have talked about it a little bit more in depth than that, but... It was like they were talking about having lunch the other day, and I'm just like, what? You just drop that bomb, and then you just kind of walk away from it and leave it there? And you change time for her? I did really like the Sands of Time episode, though, where she changes the flow of time to right that was, out of her life. That was sad. It was cinematically very moving, too, when you saw, like, the sand coming down and all their memories and, like... I thought that that was very well done. I just go back to, I never... I never felt that Mel and Nico or even Mel and Jada, I never I never felt the hearts of those couplings at all. Mm-hmm. The the one couple that I really loved was Macy and Galvin. Mm-hmm. And I think it's super sad that Galvin basically he was kind of the Dan Gordon, the next door neighbor Dan of this series. Mm-hmm. He yeah. seemed to really like her. They were kind of okay with the idea at first that she was a witch. He went to all that extra length to find a way to remove his protection mark and make sure that she would not cause him all this darkness or whatever the case was. And then he basically, he broke up with her at the end because it was too much. It was all too much. And I just felt really sad because I I liked Galvin too. I thought he added a lot of humor. He wasn't bad to look at. I enjoyed him. (laughs) You know, there was just a lot going on there. But Mel and and Mel and Nico I never cared about. Except I did Mm -hmm. like their little cure album that they I loved the cure album. I loved the fact that it was a cure album and that they shared that. But Mm-hmm. I think one of the comments that you made earlier was that, you know, they didn't do a lot to develop the backstory of the right. sisters coming into the pilot. Yeah. And they didn't take any time between the pilot and episode 15 to flesh out Mel or Maggie's backstory at all, really. Macy had more of a build, and that's maybe why we like her more. I don't know. I feel like with Nico, they summed it all up in a sentence. Nico came in and was like, well, you were just so sad after your mom died and you were just angry and blaming everyone and you were just angry and you didn't get over it. So that's why I left. But now that you're fine, let's get back together. And then I cheated on you, but let's keep going. That makes (laughs) Nico kind of a bad person. Mm -hmm. It does. Of course she was angry and sad and had all these feelings and you just left. And you already cheated on her with like Claire or somebody. I don't remember the name of the person, but it didn't endear you to Nico at all. And I mean, she clearly struggled to help Mel deal with the death of her mom, but instead of them making that like part of it, like I was trying to help you. She was, she didn't, she just said, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to deal with that. Well, okay. and then when she comes back around, so after the sands of time episode and the flow of time has been changed, but somehow Nico and Mel are still drawn together And Nico starts to confess that her brain, she feels disjointed, that she had a breakdown because she knew something was wrong. You know, I just didn't even feel any emotional impact from that. She was marrying that other girl. And I was like, yeah, get married. Go on. Just go away. I don't want you here. But I also... We're done with you. Goodbye. (laughs) Yeah. But I also didn't... I mean, I didn't love Jada and Mel together. I liked Jada as a character, and I thought this Arcana had potential that they squandered i just didn't like it when jada and mel got together because then i was like well what she you you know jada is not going to be around for very long so why are you doing this (laughs) all right i did like i was looking at your points really quick kylie and i don't know if i'm jumping anything so i apologize no jump but you asked did we notice anything between macy and harry I noticed it all season. Okay. (laughs) Like, but there were moments where I was like, I want this. But then she's like, oh, he's just my friend. Like when she took him to the party Mm -hmm. that Galvin and Summer were having. Oh, right. Like he seemed very into it. And like, it was like a couple thing. And then they got there and she's like, oh no, he's my friend. And then like how it ended. Like I felt it at the ending too, that there was some flirtation there. They were more than friends. They had to be. (laughs) But I do think it's different vibe from them oh really but i did I think was it was a little brotherly bit of a, sisterly yeah. well i, I think that's that. how macy sees it but i think harry sees her in a different light like i think harry sees her romantically whereas macy sees him as like an older brother well maybe my radar is off because i thought harry was going the gay route before they brought in <laughs> fiona or was it fiona charity no charity, charity. charity. <laughs> I do think it's a little bit of an homage though to piper and leo of because course. that was one of the things i was like when Mel was 
you know, you found out Mel's a lesbian. I was like, well, man, there's going to be no Leo, no cute half witch, half white lighter babies. Like, dang. There may not be no cute half witch, high white lighter babies. I mean, there's probably not, but I can hope. You can hope. You can hope. I'll let you hope. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe there'll be just more half demon, half witch babies. Oh, right. You know what yeah. I? You know what I've noticed since you know confession to the listener. We are recording these back to back, and the original charm discussion. Michael and Sarah were animated beyond belief, and the other two of you, I had to like drag like stuff. And in this episode, they're quiet because they're afraid of offending the masses, and the other two are not. <laughs> I, I'm actually, well, I'm not really, I never want to offend somebody. She's just not invested. I, I barely watched it because I watched it, but I was not, I couldn't care about it. And I, so I feel bad. Like I barely remember a lot of this because I feel like I just didn't give it the care and attention that somebody that was really enjoying it would have done. And we've all done that. I think for like a show that we've watched for like one episode oh this is boring me or one season. Okay. I'm tired of. Sixteen reasons why gargoyles or whatever, but that was a Riverdale. One. But for this, it was like everything was a giant game of griffins and gargoyles, and I was like, "Oh I god, this. I gotta hashtag I really Riverdale agree with reference." You, that that's there, Riverdale reference. There was definitely some griffin and gargoyle moments. I will back you a hundred percent on that, Sarah. Yeah, and if you didn't watch Riverdale, that's just saying like you're trapped in some trippy game that nobody knows why they're playing it anymore and what's happening. And you drink Kool-Aid at the end and one of you ascends. That's what I thought when I was watching Riverdale, that I was trapped in something. <laughs> That's why you're not on the panel and Sarah and Jessica I know, are. I got out of the prison. <laughs> I will say... And hopped on the Sabrina bandwagon. <laughs> oh, yeah, Sabrina. Sabrina. Sabrina's oh, so good. Same oh, universe. Okay, sorry. Back in my pocket. <laughs> same universe, but different planets. Nope, nope. That's I, 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 <laughs> the panel i will say i was a little geeked out when they brought up and this is totally off topic and random but it was when i was distracted with it being said in michigan i had like a little hometown moment when mel was telling nico like let's go away for the weekend i'll take you to harbor springs and harbor springs is right next to my hometown so i had that little like geeky moment of like i know that area and it is great for getaways and being quiet <laughs> so Real quick, to tie this in, because we were just talking about Sabrina, and it ties into the old Charmed. I got geeked out when I was watching Sabrina, and one of the characters in that show is named Prudence. And she, for lack of a better term, is a B. And she reminds me of Shannon Doherty's character. (laughs) (laughs) So that's how I tied it all together. Yes. That is for the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina panel, which Jessica is on. No, Prudence, Prue, Charm, Shannon Doherty. She's a B. Which was the last episode. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. I'm just moderating here. (laughs) And you're doing a great job, Kylie. Thanks. All the gold stars for Kylie. So now I think, because we don't want to go down this train too far, now I think (laughs) it's time to do... The comparison, and I'm a little scared. A little scared. Yep. We're gonna we're gonna do a mini versus. I think I can already determine where this is going. All right. So we do have a little bit of mishmash because not all of the alignments are aligned. For example, as I noted in the points, Macy is the cook in the reboot. She cooks and bakes, and that's her like her stress activity. Whereas Piper is the cook in the original. And we have some other things too. But let's talk about it. Clearly we have some Prue versus Macy. We have Piper versus Mel in terms of their powers. We have Phoebe versus Maggie. Leo versus Harry, obviously, because they're the white lighters. Parker is obviously the Cole analog. Nico is obviously the Andy analog. And then you've got the moms... And then there's some storylines. So so talk about them. Talk, break it down by character. Prue versus Macy. We, uh, in my mind, I know who wins every time. I like Macy. I like Macy. Okay. Mike's all shocked over here. <laughs> so I'm going to go for Prue as well. Just because Prue, because pr- the way Prue's powers progressed, I like how they did it. I like she used her eyes first. Which most people most shows they use their hands, and then she was able to use her hands in the second season, 
And this Macy character, she was just very, she's always been very like frantic a lot. And so throughout from the very beginning, she's been like, ner- had nervous energy. And I didn't like how, I like how the old tribe did the emotion thing. And her telekinesis came from her anger, which gave me more Carrie, Carrie, Carrie White vibes. While wow, this one, I still don't know why she got her powers. Like, I'm still trying to, I'm like figuring this, still trying to figure that out. Because I, I can see anger. I can see like nervousness from Piper having to be able to freeze. And then I can see Phoebe being the emotional one. And then in this one, I can see Mel. I can't see, I can see the control freak, but I don't see how a control freak would give her the power to freeze time. I still don't see that. I can see Piper being like, very nervous and anxious. That's how she got her power because she wants, she's like just very jumpy itself, herself, with it itself. See, I, I would have to argue that I can definitely see how being a control freak would make you want to freeze time and make everything the way you want it to be. I do get what you're saying about Macy and her power though, but I, I don't think it's fair to compare her to Prue and her journey over the course of three seasons when she's only doing one season so far. We don't know That's where true. her power is going to go to. We've already seen her take in the source though and her powers explode like that. And then I will, Mel, I nobody cares about. a weak source, though. I'll be honest with you. I've seen some stronger sources than her. I mean, she brought um, back the dead. Yeah, but she could turn back time, and so did the so did the source that before the charmed ones destroyed him. He could turn back time too. I will argue though that Macy, her powers were tied to her emotions because in the lab she broke a beaker when she was. Oh angry. yeah, she got angry at her boyfriend and who would move that thing across the thing. She mentioned that when she was intimate with Galvin for the first time that something happened then too. So her powers are linked to her emotions. They're not played on as much as Prue's were, but they are. And I don't know, I didn't have that connection to Prue. And I just really connected more with Macy, honestly, because you brought up nervous energy. And hi, have you met me? I'm a ball of nervous energy (laughs) (laughs) 24-7. So I really, I don't know, I just... If I had to pick between Prue or Macy, I would pick Macy. She just was more enjoyable for me than Prue. So real quick side note, now that you've mentioned that, have you noticed that two out of the three characters, they've had their powers go haywire while they're intimate with a person for the first time in the season already? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. kind of weird. Maggie's chastity belt My, with magical Maggie. powers. <laughs> and then she teleports accidentally to the Chamber of Secrets or whatever we're calling no, it. No, that was, that was Parker. <laughs> Parker oh. was the one that did that. Maggie, hers was when they tried to be intimate. She had the like magical chastity belt. So it's and all then of them. Then. Parker. Yeah, they all had their powers going. Haywire. Has Mel had anything happen? I don't know. We forgot about her. We don't really care. Well, Mel and Maggie had. Mel and Maggie had the whole Freaky Friday episode. Oh yeah, right. they did the thing that literally happened to Paige and Phoebe. I do love that bodies. they referenced that the one with Jamie Lee Curtis was better than the Disney remake of it. <laughs> there was a I lot of cute it. little funny moments like that, though. Yeah. It's actually kind of a trope for these supernatural shows. I mean, they did it on Buffy, too, with Buffy and Faith. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there's just Freaky Friday is probably always going to figure at least once in one of these shows. Mm-hmm. I think it, yeah. I don't know if I were forced to choose that I could choose between Prue and Macy because to be honest, again, Macy is my favorite sister on this show, and I think that she brings a lot to the table, if you will. Mm-hmm. Nervous or not, she is nervous, but I I actually like the fact that I mean Mel is just so forceful and aggressive all the time, like Ooh, all seriously. the time. Yeah, Macy, I like the fact that she is assertive but not confident about it. And I Mm -hmm. like the fact that Maggie is confident but not assertive, whereas Mel is both of those things. Now that I'm thinking about it, because in terms of powers, Macy and Prue, yes. In terms of personality, Macy and Piper. I think what's what's confusing between a lot of them is that you're figuring in Macy's insecurities with being the half what we thought was going to be the half mm-hmm. sister and so they're it's almost like they're mixing metaphors so to speak yeah so she's never going to have that prue personality mm-hmm. that go-getter kind of thing she yeah. does in her job but not her family life it's also hard because of the way the original switched up the dynamic when prue died moving piper into that oldest slot so mm-hmm. some of that like so it's kind of hard to draw a direct correlation we need a venn diagram for this <laughs> can to draw a correlation as best we can but well then how about mm-hmm. macy versus piper before we do piper versus mel because macy and piper <laughs> See, are i can't very... do that one <laughs> <laughs> the only difference... i think they're very similar actually yeah the only difference is the fact that piper has the middle sister power and macy has the eldest sister power it's like they rolled <laughs> dice for the powers i don't think yeah. i could pick between piper and macy because i love them both for separate reasons they both like to cook and bake and 
and I love to cook and bake. So, you know, just throw me in that mix. But <laughs> I think power wise, I just, I can't pick between Piper and Macy. I don't know why. I just, it would be one of those stalemates for me. It'd be like chocolate okay. and peanut butter. No, how about both? I also think like, I don't know, maybe this is taking a slight rewind to what we said a couple minutes ago, but the half sister thing, like who cares? <laughs> no, I, I think they did try to make it more of a big deal than it actually should have been. Like, I have some half sisters, and I like literally forget whose parents are whom. Granted, I have a half brother. I'm there with you. We're like a weird family where everybody loves each other, no matter what. Like my mom is, we all get along. But like, I don't go around saying, "And this is no, she's just my half sister, and she's my." Yeah, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I feel like somebody who doesn't have strong sense of what that is was like writing this oh it's gonna be a really big deal yeah Yeah. it doesn't matter anyway sorry i think well maybe it's something that i'm not confident about this but maybe that's something that they'll flesh out in the future i actually thought they were building towards something by making such a big deal out of it because i thought too yeah because she was gonna be like her dad was a demon yeah that's what i was hoping for or something yeah something or or now like she can't be part of the source or something because they're not she's not really the half sister Ah. I don't know. It's a yeah, big it was deal so weird. to not know who your dad is. Like Maggie, I get that. Who she thought was her dad isn't her dad. Like that's upsetting. But the rest of it, it's like Mel almost acted like they said that she wasn't her sister at all. At least in my opinion, that's mm-hmm. how Mel took it. And they were raised together. It would be the same as if you had a sibling who was adopted, mm-hmm. right? Who cares? Like I don't know. Maybe I'm just so progressive. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're just too understanding <laughs> you just don't care no because I'll, I'll agree with you anytime somebody called my oldest brother my half brother I got so insulted I was like no no that's my brother mm-hmm. like, like even, well, but which ones are your real siblings I'm like well, they're right. not legendary <laughs> none of them are <laughs> they're all real they're physically here they're mine <laughs> yeah I promise you sometimes I wish they'd go away but they don't <laughs> sorry if my siblings are listening but i agree sometimes anyway we wanted to get that clear for the listener that like that's booty <laughs> <laughs> that writing is booty well i've been yeah they didn't pay it off people. they didn't pay it off in a meaningful way at least not in season one no. whether they were half or whole aside from the fact that maggie and macy did have some special bonding time but then again mel was drama but she was also a way being on Circana and dealing Being with Jade her little placing. Yeah, so... If Mel was my sister, I would go bond with another sister, too. <laughs> Mel is a blur. I wouldn't want to bond with Mel. Yeah. So sad. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> so Piper versus Mel. Piper. 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 Yeah. Powers, <laughs> emotions, everything. Piper. Everything is Piper. Yeah. I, I would go with Piper. I feel like if they got into a witch fight, Piper would always win. Probably. Phoebe versus <laughs> Maggie. I can't pick with this I one. I have to say, I think they're inter- they're pretty interchangeable. No, I don't want to say interchangeable because that makes them sound that, that dismissive. I think they're on the same level. Like, I like Phoebe for who she was in the original Charmed, and I like Maggie for who she is in this one. I don't think there's much that you can come. I mean, for me personally, I don't think there's much I can compare and contrast because I feel like they're separate but the same. I if think that, that makes sense. They're, they're right. apples and oranges. Yeah. Sarah, what did you say? Can I say neither and just instead have Piper and Macy? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, Only if I can have Leo and Harry. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I don't know who I'd pick either. To be honest with you, Maggie, I've I've also had to go up and down with. She's my second favorite, but there's a reason why she's my second favorite. Sometimes I think she really is kind of the, the binding agent of the family. She's the heart of the family, mm-hmm. and that's why I like her. But on the other hand, she's she is kind of in the... She's very lost, and she doesn't know what she wants, and sometimes that play, plays out in a melodrama. And I don't mind it, except that in the first half of the season, they really stretch that out, stretch that stuff out. Whereas, you think we should let the listeners decide they could tweet at us at CPU Podcast? 
You found a way to work it in. I, mean, uh, I think the listener it. can join in on the conversation, right? Every time I'm subtle and I put it in, Kylie calls out that I put it in. <laughs> do, you, do you know what that word means? <laughs> she was subtle in the Riverdale one. She would just like sentence, sentence, tweet us at CPU podcast. And very, it's my, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking Phoebe. You're picking Phoebe. I'm not I'm surprised. surprised. <laughs> If I had to pick, I guess I'd pick Phoebe, but... Ugh. Mike right. is going to watch the rest of this series out of spite. <laughs> are you hate-watching yeah. this show? Are, be honest, Mike. Are you hate-watching this show? No, I just... It's just... I don't like season one. I just don't like season one, period. Oh, no. I had to get past... You Sometimes you have to get past season one to get to the rest of the good stuff. And seriously... I mean, unless it's supernatural, then you can only watch season one, and that's all you can do. That's one just five. patently false. <laughs> patently <laughs> false. <laughs> Why are you picking things? Okay, Leo versus Harry. Let's quick get back. Okay, I pick Harry. I pick Harry all the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Leo is a little bit too whiny. Not emotional. Whiny. He's extremely whiny to me. <laughs> Oh, Sarah. Sarah's <laughs> lost her damn mind. <laughs> no, Leo is a good soldier. Listen That's to the me. Best way I can describe him. No, a good soldier. He follows orders and he does what needs to be done and he shuts his mouth and gets it uh, done. Uh, he didn't Harry do that. has a he, mind. He broke the law. He literally married a witch, even though he was not supposed to in the first place. And we all know why he was supposed to do that. And then on top of that, he's always not helping other witches. He's always with Piper. Now, yeah, because he's in the background holding on the baby, he, going, "Yes, dear, yes, dear, I'll fix that thing he's tomorrow, always, dear." He did oh, like if you remember that one episode in season three. Him. In season three, <laughs> when that witch got killed, that one, his supervisor was like, "I feel it too, Leo. You just let your emotions get in the way." He was whining so much he could have just he didn't have emotions. <laughs> And like, I think that you don't understand that their love is pure. <laughs> you can go back and rewatch it for the 11th time. I think that's going to be the one that sticks with you. I think, <laughs> or alternately, watch the Return to the Blue Lagoon. And that'll just, because oh. he is great in it. And he's very cute. So I think we've all I'm decided. not saying one is better than out. the other. I think they are very different entities. I agree. I Harry. think they're different entities. However, I am going to pick Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to pick Harry solely on the fact because I'm really thriving on shows not pushing relationships. And I like that Harry gets to become his own person where I love Leo. I have nothing against Leo. But it became Leo and Piper. There was really no Leo on his own. Whereas yeah, Leo Harry, and Piper would definitely have a joint Facebook page. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, I agree with you about push the pushing relationships thing. Like, let people be single. Like, it's totally cool. Sometimes I wish I was single and I long for those days. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so that being said, listen to the ones he's not in. But that being said, I like. Or sometimes Piper. the ones he's in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I liked Piper and Leo. I think it was okay to have that one relationship because of all the like struggles they went through to get there. Mm-hmm. Ugh, it was so beautiful. That's love. And Phil Harris. That is. They are their relationship goals. And if I'm honest, they're my OTP. But <laughs> <laughs> if I have to pick on them solely as single individuals, I will pick Harry. Ugh, that's fine. That just leaves Leo for me. You can have Harry. There you go. See, there I'm we go. Here. You get Leo. I'll get Harry. It'll be fine. Make sure he sends you proper English breakfasts. It'll be fine. <laughs> as much as I love Leo, I'm also on the Harry train. You guys, your betrayal is... I'm sorry. <laughs> because I do think that once it got to a certain point in the original Charmed, Leo's character did not have any more dimension. He He basically was... It was Piper and Leo. It wasn't Leo's own particular storyline or particular, you know, quest. Even even for fatherhood, it, he was often in the background when it came to Wyatt. He, he would throw, you know, he, he would get... He abandoned her, made her a single it's mother for about, realistic. like, a couple months. I think, I think that's pretty realistic. But he also not wasn't a fully fleshed cool. individual. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think he was more fleshed out at first. I think when they were developing their romance toward marriage and even up until she had Wyatt there was development for Leo I do think that 
But I think Harry is richer from moment one. And he's really the only character on this Charmed that's as fully fleshed out as he is. So I have to give it to Harry. And that's saying something because it's only been one season. So I'm interested to see what happens in season two. Cole versus Parker. To Cole. me, this oh. is no contest. Cole. 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 <laughs> Even I mean, who would even say Balthazar over Parker? <laughs> I like Parker, but I will always pick Cole. <laughs> Cole is like bad boy incarnate. Parker is like lawyer, and he's cute. He's a he he's a tree. He skips school. That's his bad boy personality. E-boy. Parker is a little bit milk toast, and I want to feel for him. I want to sympathize with. I found out my daddy's a demon, and now I have to exercise that half of me. Sure, I get that. <laughs> That's, you know, that's legit, but Cole's wrestling with his evil side is much more compelling, and Julian yeah. McMahon is I hands down the, a better actor. I think the best way to describe Cole and Parker, Cole is name brand, Parker is great value. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I could go with that. I agree with it. I definitely go with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. So the, the analog for Andy on the show is Nico. I happen to know that Nico does not last past season one if anybody says nico i gotta go (laughs) oh it's andy it has to be andy Andy trudeau i love him well nico's a horrible person andy is not (laughs) nico bailed on mel and cheated on her Ugh. whereas andy (laughs) was just pining for prue pining and pining and pining yeah he had the purest truest love for her yeah pure like they were like childhood sweethearts like were cute <laughs> Sarah. And then <laughs> Patty versus Marisol. These are the Patty. Moms. I can't Patty. pick this one yet because I feel like we haven't seen enough of Marisol, in my opinion. See, and I thought the opposite. Like, I was never sold on the mom from the original. Like, I, I think Marisol's the better character. I don't know how to answer my own question because. <laughs> it- <laughs> Patty is the one who had the affair with the white lighter, right? Right. That's how uh, they... Yeah. It was yeah. not an affair. They weren't it, even married. Yeah, they she wasn't even married to her husband. What? They were, she wasn't married to her husband then, was she? Paige is the youngest, so yeah. Yeah. They were, were they divorced I, at that point? They were. I thought they were separated or divorced at that point. Because she died from a water demon. And I'm pretty sure that they were all old enough. And Paige is how much younger than Phoebe is? I'm not sure. Hold on, I have I had the timeline up a second ago. One second. Because I don't think because I don't think they were together during that time. Okay. Well even if it wasn't an affair, it was a prohibited romance. That's true. It was Those are the best ones. Um. <laughs> Paige's own so Pipe Prue was born in seventy, Piper seventy three, Phoebe in seventy five, Paige in seventy seven. Oh yeah. So wow, she's yeah. just banging them out. Two and Patty was killed in seventy eight. <laughs> A fertile myrtle. <laughs> so no, about that witches. name begins with an M. It's got to begin with a P. <laughs> a fertile myrtle. <laughs> oh. It's getting weird. <laughs> Patty? I don't know. But if I absolutely had to pick, I would pick Marisol. Oh, Sarah, promiscuous Patty. That was that was it. I missed it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Patty because I love that actress. She's, she's fun. amazing. She's great. Not the Hughes. Her. I think that's yeah, her name. Yeah, from Blossom. Mm-hmm. And others. Um, <laughs> other thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm dating myself. You bit. are. Wasn't she untouched by an angel? I maybe. No, that's Wilma Downey. But they do oh, look. Similar. They do look similar. I'll give you that. Also, touched by an angel. Dang. I loved that show, but I blame my grandma for it. <laughs> that's throwback vibes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will not be on a panel for that. If anyone asks for it, I say no now. <laughs> No one has, so are we doing Little House on the Prairie next? No, we should. Sarah wants to. Oh, no, requested, no. and it is on, I think it's on either Hulu or Amazon Prime right now. Well, why, why don't we just do Wings? Patty versus Marisol, I think I would probably be inclined to say Patty right now, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't change my mind. A, I don't think that Marisol's actress is all that great either. B, I I just, I guess I need to know more about her, whereas I feel like we know a lot about Patty, and I do love that actress as well. And they, we didn't talk about this in the original show episode, but 
some of my favorite episodes of the original show are when they get to see the relatives mm-hmm. that have mm-hmm. been gone, whether it's the dad who's still alive but doesn't come around much, or mom who is not alive, or grandma who is not alive, or even their past ancestors, Melinda Warren, all those things, tend to be in my favorites. So I, I kind of like that, whereas Marisol started off in the pilot, and she's been very omnipresent in this season, and what I've learned of her doesn't make me like her more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Is, is there any storyline that you think is comparable and which would you like better? Other than the obvious ones like Parker and Cole, for example. I don't know. Or the source. The source is probably I the kind of one. wish the source wouldn't have been so prevalent in this season. Like, I wish yeah. it wouldn't have, like possessed anybody till season two again they're pacing they, they right they really it all goes back to pacing i think um, they needed to pick a story arc and weave it in they could still have ha- they could have done it the x-files way or the supernatural way where they have the monsters of the week but there were still <laughs> mentions of the overall arc without it being an overall arc well, they still could have done what the, uh, the old charm did too because that's what you're just talking about that's what the old charm did as well they had monsters of the week, but it all weaved into that final when this when the source came about, mm-hmm. and then they could have had Parker become like the actual the source, like they did with Cole. They could have done that because Cole was half demon anyway, so they could have, and he became the source later on after helping destroy the source. So it could have done something to weave it in like that because they were already kind of leading up to it, but they didn't like fully get there. They it- just rushed it. it it felt like they were so busy creating the world and fleshing it out with different characters and mythologies that they forgot oh crap we have a we have a finale to do in yeah. you know, seven eight episodes we better get on that mm-hmm. going back to pacing and i think kylie and sarah might understand where i'm coming from because we've talked about it with riverdale i kind of feel like that's where some of these shows are going nowadays where they take things that could have been stretched across like a season or a half a season and just jam pack it all into one because we've talked about this on Riverdale too. Like yeah. things that could have been stretched out multiple episodes get thrown into one because of time. Because they're stretching out other things that shouldn't be stretched. Exactly. And that's very much a vibe that I got from the new charmed. And it just kind of was like, but why do we have to do this? And the more I thought about it, I was like, but they're also doing this in Riverdale too. Partially. I wonder if that's because there's so much content to choose from that sometimes they think volume is better than quality. So they're like, well, if we want people to pick our show and stay with us, we got to keep tons of them coming out. But I don't know if that's the case. I would love if some of these CW shows, and we cover a lot of them on the podcast, these 22 episode seasons just feel so stretched and so bloated Mm -hmm. that some of them could, not all of them, but some of them could benefit from having trimmer seasons where yeah. they would have to then, because, and I'm just going to use one example, Arrow is a show that we've covered on our DCTU series panel. That was 22 episodes about, for its first seven seasons, complain, 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 complain. But its last season was just 10 episodes. It was just used to set up the crossover and wrap up Arrow. And I thought that's been one of its most successful seasons in years. Just because it was trim, it was focused, and they knew where they were trying to go. And I feel like Charmed, it doesn't have to be 10, but I don't think it should be 22. I think Mm -hmm. 13 to 16 would probably do them just fine. Well, I feel like we've discussed this on many panels, that it seems like pasting is becoming more of a prevalent issue with different shows. Like, how many shows have we been on a panel together, Kylie, that it seems like by the last six, seven episodes, you're like, oh, crap, it's all coming to a head. Like, American yeah. Horror Story is terrible about that. It can be. Yeah. It depends okay. on the season, but it can be. Coven, it on Coven, Jesus. The last three episodes, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, that's, how, that's all the story right there. That's yeah. how Apocalypse was for me. I'm like, Apocalypse? Coming at me. Oh, I got so mad. I got so mad with Apocalypse. Even it, well, though, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not on that podcast, so I really <laughs> <laughs> I will say... Kylie asked what storylines we thought we could correlate to the yeah. old. I was, I think I said this already, but I was correlating Macy coming in to Paige coming in. Mm-hmm. I think they definitely were going for that. So that was like the only one I could see that was like I, super obvious. It's not storyline, but it's tying together. I do think the haunt is their version of P3. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. Mel's bartending, you mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, because I feel like that's kind of that, like, homage. You know, I didn't really catch that one. It took a minute. I didn't really pick up on it until Mel started bartending. Mm-hmm. I guess once she started working they, there, they must not be hitting you over the habits of that. No, well, they're really not. Location wise, obviously the house, not the same house, doesn't look exactly the same, but it's pink and Victorian. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of gingerbread outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. very yeah. similar feel about it. And they the done, attic is very similar, in my opinion. Yeah, very yeah. similar. Yeah, including very the window. Similar. The front of the book, the Book of Shadows, obviously with the Triquetra and all that stuff. There is something else. The front door when they get shut at the end of the first season? Yeah, Macy's little, like yeah, her I, wrist. Oh, it was Macy that did it. Never it was mind. Macy. I thought one of the other sisters did it, and I was like, I didn't like that. But no, nope, that was definitely <laughs> a Harkin to Prue when she does it at mm-hmm. the end of the original Charmed pilot. He probably was like, I'm going to do this so that Shannon Doherty doesn't track me down and kill me. <laughs> I don't, I honestly think Shannon is has written Charmed out of her lexicon. She's not, ta- mm-hmm. she's never talked she about it. Shannon said it was a good idea and so did Rose McGowan. They were like, cool, or whatever. I, I don't know. I've never, I haven't read much positive about it. I've only, the, the two girls in the middle, as far as the original sisters, were very, very vocally outraged. Holly Marie Combs went on a rant, and normally her tweets don't pop up for me automatically, but that one was like retweeted, 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 and so it started to trend. I mean, I kind of get it, and after watching this, I kind of wonder if they could have done something completely different, but had these, had actress, they could have had the same cast, and it just not been charmed, but been something else, and just, I don't know. Yeah, but that's the whole thing, the name recognition. I did tell my roommate, there's things that should be remade and there are things that should not be touched. And I did tell her that I don't think Charm should have been touched. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Louder for Louder those in the bag. In the bag. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the, these creators, separately, Jenny Snyder Ehrman, I always ask this on a pilot episode and a finale episode. So Jenny Snyder Ehrman did create Jane the Virgin, as well as Emily Owens, MD, which is apparently a show that got canceled after one season. I have heard of that one. huh? Meryl Streep's daughter was the lead in that. All right. Oh, I've never heard of it. We did talk about that, I think, at one point. Does watching... Char- First of all, have you watched Jane the Virgin? I think we should focus on that. I have. I have. I haven't seen all of it, but I thought it was funny. But then I started to get a little bored after a while. I have not. But fellow podcast panelist Micah has told me that I need to watch it. I think you would really enjoy it. We should actually. watch it. We can watch it together. Yeah, <laughs> watch party. Watch party number two. Woo! I'm not watching that. I don't have time for that. You, you don't want to watch it? Char- not, I didn't watch Jane the Virgin, and I don't understand how that could even happen. So I'm like, mm. there's a There's actually a very well-written premise to it. I felt the same, and then people talked me into it, and it's now in one of my all-time favorite shows. Kylie keeps trying to get me to watch it. I think you would <laughs> like it, and the guys on that show are hot. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> saying. Raphael is H-O-T-T hot. Not that I have a thing. <laughs> I love this panel so much. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, would watching Charmed motivate you to watch Jane the Virgin, or did Jane the Virgin no. motivate you to watch Charmed? No. Charmed didn't, neither. but you and Micah have. I just added it to my list. <laughs> I, I would say neither as well. Okay. Is it on Netflix or Hulu's? Netflix. Fine, <sighs> I'll watch it. I'll try, I guess. Look, you changed your mind. Good job. <laughs> well, and I would actually be surprised if you hated it, so... You just tell me about that. <laughs> I'll let you know, but I'm not, yeah. So how does Charmed compare to other TV shows in general for you, apart from the original Charmed? Well, it's not great. I mean, mm-hmm. I will say out of the shows that I am on panels for, because honestly right now that's what my TV watching is shows that I talk about. It is at the bottom of my list, and I am only on three panels currently. <laughs> There you go. Ugh. I don't know. I had hope for it because as much as I hate to come back to it again, but as much as Riverdale is a headache and there were very rough moments with it, I had hope for Charmed because I was like, you know, there all these fresh new things are coming out. I didn't want it to happen because, like I said, something should not be remade. But I had hope. My hope is now very little. I think <laughs> My hope is for Harry. <laughs> I think it's sad because 
I like projects that support women. I like projects that support people of color and people in the LGBTQ plus and different gender issues. I love shows that do that. And this show does do that without making it weird. Like Mm -hmm. Mel seems to be a lesbian and she doesn't say if she's bisexual or or anything, but but it's not a big deal. We don't see her come out. It's not a big situation between people. It's just their lives. And that's great. And I like that aspect of it. To piggyback off that, she did say she's been with a man and it's it's not worth it. So I think she is just a lesbian. It's a lesbian, okay. But to piggyback off of that, I it's got to be one of the first couple episodes because I can't remember it clearly. She does talk to Harry about the fact that she never had to be in a closet. That her mom knew she was a lesbian before she knew she was a lesbian. And, she and that she was that. more upset about having to be in the closet about her magic than she ever felt about her sexuality. And I love that because that's telling people, you don't have to be ashamed of who you are. Right. Right. It's normal. It's normal. And it doesn't just move on with your life. There are so many other things that can define a person. Why are we? Right. Yeah, they they don't make it a talking point. Right. And I, it kind of reminds me of Schitt's Creek does that same thing. I love that show. It's just what's happening and, and it's normal. And I like that aspect of it. I wish there were more things I liked though. But I don't. I do like, and and it's going to sound funny coming from me because looking at me, you wouldn't believe this. But as a person who's biracial, I did like seeing the struggle that Maggie had when she realized that she was Latina and African-American and the guilt she felt checking the African-American box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm Native American and Caucasian. And anytime I click the Native American box, which is what my family has told me to do my whole life, there's that little bit of guilt because I don't look it. And so it's almost like you feel like you're stealing from like a culture, even though it's your own. I I agree. I think that episode was actually pretty powerful. It's not something that it's not something that mainstream TV does very often without it being a show that's already rooted in a cultural. Mm-hmm. So I like the fact that this show, even though the family is of a culture, it's still a mixture of culture that they can then explore that way. And I thought it was very, I don't think this show is, aside from Lucy, I don't think this show is tone deaf when it comes to where it fits in, mm-hmm. in today's culture. Mm-hmm. I think it does very well with that part of it, which I think is attributable to these writers, quite honestly. I think it fits in like with Jane the Virgin in that aspect. You know, culture is part of it because they are of a culture, but it isn't like, it's not tokenism on the network. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you still really haven't talked about how, I know Sarah doesn't really like it, so it's hard for her to, but how it compares to other shows for you jessica talked about it being her least priority i guess the guys what do you think for me it's still least priority because i'm watching i only go back to it whenever i'm like my internet gonna work today maybe i can like take some time out to actually watch the show sometimes i'm just like i can't watch it i have to because like after you not watch a show for a long time you tend to forget what happens in it so it's like it's one of those shows that i have to like actually force myself to sit there and watch to actually get back into because I just can't like just sit and watch an episode like the regular charm where I know like what happens throughout the whole show. All I can do is just pick the favorite episode I want to watch. While this one I have to like sit and pay attention and eh, it's just not all that appealing to me sometimes. So it's more of like I'll watch it when I can rather than I'm gonna watch it because I have to. Me it's kind of like I don't know I like the fact that I can just put it on while I'm playing my video games or read my book or whatnot but it, it, for right now it feels like and Kylie you're not gonna like my analogy it feels like mashed potatoes. Why? Yeah, they're good. Dissing the mashed I know, potatoes. I know. <laughs> Hold on. Hear out the logic. Yeah, okay. they're good. I don't mind them, but it's not the steak on my plate and it's not the vegetable I really don't want to eat. It's just kind of <laughs> there. See, for me, mashed potatoes are a plate priority. That's why you said I wouldn't like for it. For me, mashed potatoes would be red meat. That's I right. <laughs> I don't eat red meat either, so yeah, I'm with you. When Kylie comes over, I try to make mashed potatoes because I know her feelings on mashed potatoes. I mean, mashed potatoes it. are the best thing in the world. What, Sarah? I'm keto. What are you saying? Mashed what? Sorry. Rice cauliflower. <laughs> yes. 
your your life is fine. My my uh, potatoes on the side, my carbs on the side, my dressing on the side, my life on the side. Give me the carbs. How does it compare to other supernatural <laughs> horror or fantasy TV dramas on the CW or off? You keep the same thing. The same thing. It's, yeah, it's it's little. You could you could replace plot elements and characters and mix and match them, and you could create a million different shows the same way they've been doing for the last twenty years. Honestly, Supernatural is better. <laughs> Riverdale I agree. The writing's better. The pacing's sense. better. Except for season eight. We won't talk about season eight of Supernatural. Season like seven. You're talking about seven. The Leviathan season so, is seven. I like Supernatural. I actually loved it when they brought in someone special to my heart. Who is this someone? Melina. Oh. oh my god, me too. <laughs> You've just made a best friend. <laughs> my husband did not watch Supernatural, and you've been talking about it for like four hours. <laughs> I only watched the musical episode, and I can sing the, those songs to you, but otherwise, I literally don't know. So I know a little bit of Supernatural, but I'm in that same boat as Sarah right now. S- Sarah and Jessica, it's okay. Nobody's perfect. We understand. <laughs> I get it. I feel like I missed like 20 years of TV because it's been on like... 15 years 15 but close <laughs> i will say i have watched quite a bit of it i i have watched up to the mark of cain that's a lot oh, stop there no. false <laughs> 11 is so good so false no no way <laughs> but i will also say that riverdale scares me more than charm does yeah charm like, isn't scary no. so the thing is if you watch sabrina Chilling Adventures. Sabrina, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. They did a they did a nod to Riverdale and saying River, no one wants to go it's, to Riverdale. Not even it's the because they're in the it. same universe. They're in the yes. same. That's been acknowledged. Yes, but is it? I think it's in a different time period, though. We don't know yet. We're going to talk yet. about this. Well, <laughs> either way, we all know that the witches of Riverdale. I mean, the witches of Greendale don't want to even go to Riverdale at all. Period. Because they're that's because they don't want to go slumming. They're crazy over hey, there in Riverdale. Hey. Greendale and Riverdale all have their own perks. Thank you very much. Riverdale is evil. Riverdale has Pop's Chocolate Shop. And I can't talk about it because we haven't done our next panel yet, Kylie. I can't do it. <laughs> Hashtag no spoilers. The rest of the people don't want to go to Greendale either. Yuck. But they don't they like Greendale. They only do it when they have to run away from their families. Yeah. See, that's it. But I yeah, so Greendale, hope that they make cool. that crossover happen, though. I so hope it. Oh, what they do that. When we talk on that. Thursday, Kylie, I'm going to have a heyday. It's fine. <laughs> but Sabrina is a superior show to Charmed by I agree. leaps and bounds. I agreed. I agreed. And I this is that. one of those, these are one of those instances, and I don't know if you're going to leave this in the, the recording or not. I think that this reboot for Sabrina did better than the reboot for Charmed. Most I think that assuredly. it's a different, it's a different aspect on it. No. And it's, they're so different. Like, they're so different. And I think that's what they should have done with Charmed. Mm-hmm. If they wanted to do it, they should have done it like they did with the chilling adventures of Sabrina and made it, Similar, but still extremely different. Well, the thing is, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina comes from a comic book. Yeah. Well, and so they used a lot of some of the pieces from the comic book for the show. Right. While the original, while the Sabrina that we're used to, the Sabrina Teenage Witch, was from a comic book, but it was more lighthearted. This one, that Chilling Adventures was a comic book that was more, like, for the, for gorish like that horror type of feel, Lovecraftian. Yeah, and so Charmed is a different is a different thing itself because it was never a comic book, so it was, I never, agree. it was hard to bring it. It was hard to bring something new to something that was because there's no happening. source material. Yeah. But and I get that I do and I understand it and I support it a hundred percent. But even looking, I hate bringing up Riverdale again. I really do. But even looking at Riverdale, it's not following the original Archie comics. It's following more so the revamp of the comics that had a little bit of a darker turn to it. So in that aspect, I know there was nothing for them to run with with Charm to do that. But I feel like they should have been able to because I don't know. I guess I'm just being biased. I just feel like they could have found a way to still kept Charmed but make it different like they did with Riverdale and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Yeah, I understand. I agree. I actually agree with that. I think they didn't have to take so many elements of the original charm. They could have done something totally different. I think they're trying for it. Maybe they're just trying for it and they're not good at it. Not successful enough at it. All right. Here are the magical questions. I can already anticipate what Sarah might answer, but I asked them universally just the same. First of all, are you going to keep watching? Yes. Yes. 
Don't I have to? <laughs> it would be nice if you did at least one more season. Yes. <laughs> or else yeah. Shannon Doherty will show up at your house. <laughs> she won't care. Oh, don't put that curse on someone. <laughs> The problem is, I'm gonna have to rewatch season one. I was like barely paying. I do too. I actually do too. Well. I'll be watching so, with you. I guess watch party. Oh no, watch, I'm not. So no, just watch the last again, seven episodes. Yeah, just watch the last seven episodes. Don't even go through the whole season again because I don't think okay. it's worth it. Unless you want to see Galvin get hit by a car again, because that was hilarious. I don't want to see that. What? I kind of do. I kind of do. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't want to see Tate get hit by a bus. Yeah, we're the at the point at which the plot points pick up with heavy paragraphs, like look on Wikipedia, align it with that episode, and start there. I don't think you mm-hmm. need the first 15. It doesn't really mm-hmm. help you. Not at all. And you only have to pay attention to those, and you might even like them if you do. Now here's the other scary question. So that was three yeses, a do I have to, and I, of course, moderate, so I will. The to next, be fair, mine was a very reluctant yes. <laughs> sure, I get it. No, I get I get the very re- I get the reluctancy out of three out of maybe three and a half out of five people. The only one that <laughs> the only one that was like yes on it was Jeremy. Okay. Well, and I'm just watching because I have time. It's no it's no big deal to me. It's a yes. It's fine. Okay. So here the other scary question is: Would you recommend the rebooted Charmed to others? Why or why not? Sarah, I don't this know what that means. This is the first time in panel history that I will not recommend a show to someone. If I don't like the person, then yeah, I'll recommend it. The only, <laughs> the only reason I would recommend this show to somebody is if they have never seen the original chart. I'm going to say neither until I know more about the second season. Okay. Yeah, you know, okay, go with me on the journey here. I, I maybe, this is who I would recommend this to. Sometimes, I'm listeners, I am a high school teacher, and the kids know I'm on this panel. They know I do, you know, podcasting. And so they always want to talk to me when we have free time about what I'm watching. And they want recommendations from me, and we talk about different shows that we're watching. I've had some, some kids like Riverdale and some kids like American Horror Story, I know. But if they like <laughs> those kinds of things that are like, hey, should I watch Charmed? I might be like, shh. Sure, watch the new one. Yeah. <laughs> it's so wildly specific, but Mike, maybe. you're subscribing to that theory. Are you a high school teacher? I am not, <laughs> but I know how people can get when it comes to like because I love watching old TV. I'll watch old TV shows from the 60s, black anything black and white till like probably like the late 80s. But I honestly, they, they, if you didn't grow up with it, you wouldn't understand, you wouldn't understand, you wouldn't understand it very well. And I grew up around like watching black and white TV show and because that's what, I didn't have cable. So I was able to watch that. And then CW was just like another, another way for me to watch TV shows. So when Charm came on, that was one thing I was hooked on and it just didn't, it, it's not going to click well now because if they don't grow up with it it's going to be hard for them to adjust to watching it because now they're used to other TV shows that are very short, short, that don't have much of a storyline, doesn't have like a big plot to build up to or something like that. Usually it's like, this episode is about this thing. Now this episode is about this thing. It's not like a big, oh, their powers come together because of this. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that. Oh, I knew it. Like they don't, they don't really get that. Like these TV, I really don't like the TV shows now anyway, but that's another Sorry for another day, but yeah, I would I would definitely not recommend the new charm because I will make I will force you to watch the old charm first and then you can watch the new charm. I'm kind of with Mike. I, I I don't think I could, in, with good conscience, recommend the new Charmed if you haven't seen the old Charmed. I think the old charm does it a little bit better. You might decide you like the new charm better, and that's fine. But they're not the ones that came up with the idea. The old charm is so that's kind of where I'm at with it, and. I would recommend that first before I recommended The New Charmed. I don't even know after watching the first season that I can call New Charmed a good TV show. I'm still kind of exploring. I'm giving it, I, I like I said, I gave it a three or maybe three and a quarter. We'll see what happens. I'm going to see what things are allowed to flourish. If the right things flourish, then great. If they, if they, if they don't let those things flourish, then 
yeah, that's where I'm going to land. So I'm with you on all of that 100%. So with that said, is there anything else that you wish to say that you haven't already said about the first season of the Charmed reboot? Nope. <laughs> Macy shouldn't have been the source. I'm done. <laughs> I Hashtag can... justice for Macy. Hashtag justice for Macy. <laughs> Can Mel die and they bring in a new sister? <laughs> you watched season two, so I don't know. Oh, I don't. I just want them to do that. I don't oh, know if they're going to do it. I just they're want not going to do, do it. They're not going to do it. She's actually got the top billing for whatever reason. Darn it. I know. But the other girl's been on Disney. She should have more billing than she does. I don't <laughs> also, know. Also, the works. girl from the acapella episode who got knocked out is also from a Disney movie. She's from Teen Beach Movie. I work with kids. Sorry. So, <laughs> man, they got all these people at Disney, yet they don't pay them. And Disney also, money. the girl in the wheelchair from the acapella episode was on a Glee episode because she auditioned for Glee. I have way too much wait, 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 wait. knowledge. Is she the is she the actual girl in the wheelchair? The one? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. She's the one that was on Broadway in Oklahoma. I don't. I don't in care. I don't care for her. But that's not this podcast. <laughs> 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 we'll talk later, Michael. <laughs> okay. When? Oh, is it Allie? Nolan? Yeah. I just don't enjoy her voice personally, but that's just me. Sorry. Any, no, it's all right. Anything <laughs> else you want to add at this point? Everybody needs a Harry in their lives. No, I don't need one. <laughs> and Maggie Levitate? I oh, want Maggie to levitate. That's what I want. Sarah needs a Leo. Everyone else needs a Harry. I want... I've got a Leo. His name's Nick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Boys. Their names are Wyatt and Chris. It's perfect. They're not. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. Liar. <laughs> They're not, not their names. And especially since we've already announced junior podcasters on this program. Yeah. <laughs> well, since I think you have buttoned this up about as buttony as you're going to get it, what I'd like to do is thank Jeremy, Jessica, Sarah, and Michael for joining me once again to talk about Charm Season 1. And because we've talked about Charm Season 1, it's now time to roll the credits. Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation Point was produced by Back Pocket Productions, run by yours truly, the Chief Couch Potato, which is really another way of saying executively produced by me. Kylie Piet. My associate producers are Krista Pennington and Celine Resmer. I edit this podcast and our logo is by Rebecca Wallace. Our marketing graphic artist is Krista. Our theme song was written by Sarah Milbratz and sung by Sarah, Amy McDaniel, and Kelsey Resmer. Kelsey played the keyboard, Ian McDonough played the bass, Christian Somerville played the guitar, and the whole kit and caboodle was engineered and produced by Kyle Aspinall and Christian. We hail from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Please, if you like what you hear, take the time to rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Google Play, or wherever you find your podcasts. Give us stars, give us comments, give us reviews. Let us know how we're doing. Send us a message. We might just read it on the podcast. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what we should keep, what we should toss. You know how it goes. And if you have suggestions on shows we might consider, contact us at our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, where we have a guest book, via email at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, or via our social media, Facebook, Twitter at CPU Podcast, and Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite. Though, of course, we add new and old shows to chat about around the water cooler all the time. We always have several more new episodes coming down the pike. Just listen to our intros. And if you miss old episodes or want to know in general what we cover, just find us. We are everywhere and searchable wherever you look for things on the internet. You can search for us, or you can subscribe at our website, our channels, our social media accounts. Stay up on our new events and episodes. Until the next time, Charm, both the original and the reboot, are available on Netflix, as that's the service that currently has the most WB and all of the CW shows, because that's how it works for them. They've got a contract. We don't have a contract for talking about Netflix. In the meantime, our Charm panel will next reconvene to discuss Season 2 of the Charmed reboot, as our panel continues to remain potentially interested in water cooler discussion of this show that it's all very reluctant and lukewarm we'll see what happens so until next time until next episode new episodes are published every wednesday keep listening keep watching stay tuned Bye-bye. Bye-bye.